like she said, I'm Brittany Hotmare. I'm a junior at Brentwood High School. When I was beginning to think about what I was going to say, I decided to think about what scars really are. Before you get a scar, you get a wound, and that wound causes a lot of pain. Once you get the wound, a scab will appear, and the scab will temporarily take away the pain. But sometimes the scab will come off and everything will come back. This might happen a few times until you get the actual scar, and when you do, the pain will have finally ended. And that's how my life has been with my most scarring moment. About seven months ago, my parents sat my sister Ashley and I down to have a family discussion. When a child hears that, they know that something's wrong, and they come up with all these different assumptions. Mine was that we were going to have to put down my dog Mocha, and my sister's was that we were getting new Range Rovers. Let's just say that both of us were way off. Soon, soon we found out why we were having this family meeting. Our parents were getting a divorce. After hearing that, my wound had opened up. Um, most, ch most children cry and scream. Some ask what they did wrong, and some question why God would do this to them. I sat on my couch and stared. I didn't know what to think, say, or do. So I walked upstairs and called my best friend, Sarah Hampton. Ten minutes later, I ended up at her house and was doing all of those things while she was hugging me. I was crying, screaming, questioning what I did wrong and why God would do this to me. Looking back now, I wish I could have told myself not only how much stronger I would be, but how much stronger my relationship with the Lord would be. I started thinking about all my friends who had parents that were divorced and how they handled the news. Most took out their anger by doing things that parents don't really approve of. I decided to take a higher road because even though my parents were causing me this huge wound, I loved them and respected them. At the time, I wasn't exactly strong in my faith, but fortunately, I was going to a Young Life camp a week after I got the news. That week made my faith go at an all-time high and made my wound start scabbing. Unfortunately, things at home started getting rough, and my faith didn't stay that strong very long. Somehow, though, God knew that my love for him would always conquer the hatred towards home and the temptations to do things that I shouldn't be doing. As much as my friends offered to help out, I didn't think that any of them would truly understand where I was coming from. Therefore, I felt that my only turn to was the Lord. Sometimes when my house gets rough, I will escape to my Bible. Many times I'll flip it open and feel as though he is speaking directly towards me. One night, I remember opening up my Bible and turning to Psalm 9, 9 through 10. The Lord is a refuge for the oppressed, a stronghold in times of trouble. Those who know your name trust in you, for you, Lord, have never forsaken those who seek you. Every time I read this verse, I start to think about how much God truly loves me. When I read this, I know that as hard as it is, God is going to be the one helping me get through it. And I trust him with doing this because he has done it for many other tragedies that have occurred in my life. After the many months of the, the divorce process, my scab will come off eventually and all the pain will come back. But I always look towards the Lord to ease my pain. And to anyone who's going through a family divorce, turn to the Lord. Most people don't believe that turning to his love will help them out at all, but honestly, his love is what gets me through the day. Even on the toughest day, even on the toughest days, I'll turn to the verse Jeremiah 29, 11 through 14. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. Then you will call upon me and come and pray to me, and I will listen to you. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. I will be found by you, declares the Lord. My scab is still there, but I know that with my friends and God's help, the scab will fall off, and all that will be left is a small scar. Thank you. So hopefully you've been encouraged by hearing from um, some different people, their scarred stories, and hearing about what happens when we turn to God um, versus bearing that and not allowing ourselves um, to hear and allow, heal and allowing those wounds to heal? Um, I've heard this metaphor before, and I'm going to blind a few of you, and I apologize for that if you're in the front with the lights. I've heard this metaphor. Um, it's from a fifth century mystic and theologian, and he believed that when we were created, we were created in the image of God. And so it'd be like you walking up here and just standing in front of this mirror and letting it just reflect. And God saying, I want to create you in my image. You are my child and this is how I've created you. And I don't want there to be hurt in the world. But <laughs> at the fall of man, that's when sin entered the world. That's when hurt entered. That's when we have brokenness in our world. And I've tested this once and I don't know how it will go. When sin entered the world, 
We have brokenness. We see these pieces. We have fragmentation. It falls. It doesn't stay together. And that's what causes hurt. That's what causes our scars. And so this theologian believed that our life is like we are on a journey of trying, I know y'all are blinded, of trying to put these pieces back together. It is like trying to put the world back together. And that's where we had Jesus enter in. And we see these, these full mirrors up front, and that's God's plan. That's God's intention for our lives. But because of Jesus Christ, we have grace. Again, that's why Jesus entered the world. And because of this grace, we are constantly on this journey of being put back together and put back into God's story instead of being like these broken pieces. Because again, I'll say it one more time. We all have scars. They just look different for everybody. If you want to grab a hand, we're going to close out in prayer. God, we thank you for life, Lord. Life is precious. We thank you for that gift. We thank you for loving us and for your son, Jesus Christ, and for the redemption that offers us, and that, God, you do not desire for us to live fragmented lives, but whole and complete lives. May we follow after the example of Zacchaeus. May we follow after the example of the people we heard from today, the ways to heal and not to heal, and um, what to do with our wounds and our scars that we have in our life. Lord, may we turn to people. May we be willing to be bold and to not um, just play it safe, but to tell people about our hurt and allow that healing process to happen. God, be with us during our small groups time tonight, um, that that process may continue to happen. Because we all have scars. Um, we may not have encountered big ones yet. A lot of people in this room have more scars than they should have at this age. But Jesus, we know that you offer us healing and grace. We love you, God, and we thank you for those gifts. We ask this all in your name. Amen.